The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman here. Just lost sound. I think I'm alive. Am I alive? Yep, I'm alive. I'm, I'm alive, but am I alive? So this is Basil Chapman sitting in for Larry Pesaventa's hour. Uh, this is the uh, trade what you, trade what you see hour. Uh, Larry, I believe, is improving a lot. We're all hoping that his voice is good enough to be able to come back next week. We all miss him. Um, hey, Larry, have a wonderful weekend. Get yourself better. Um, we're looking at the comp index down 38. I said earlier on a question came up about the monthly chart on the Q. So I said we'll look at also the broader comp index. So one, two, three, there we go. One, oh, wrong place. I typed it into the uh, den by mistake. One, two, three. There we go. So what we're looking at in the comp is that that candle from last week with the doji, long legged doji candle from April. Yeah, April. We closed under it. I never like to see that. I just don't. It means that it could be. We. I, I talk about it as a halfway marker. It doesn't mean halfway particularly. It just means the direction continues from where it was going. It's a. It's a month of indecision. Wow. I don't know about indecision, but it's basically a month of indecision. And now you got to follow what happens after that. Uh, is it a, a reversal candle? Well, at this point, it hasn't been a reversal candle. So it makes it really important that this particular month of July, 1st of July, this is what we've got, you want to see at least a test of the midpoint of that candle, the midpoint being around about 290, it's called a 295. And we're way down at 278 right now. Well, I shouldn't say way down because just five, six days ago, we were at uh, 297, wasn't it? Let me just see, 290. Why am I not getting anything? There it is. Uh, 296.58. So it's possible. Okay, a couple of things going on. I drew this during the previous sh uh, show, my Tiger Technician's Hour. I drew this in. I drew this ball formation. I, I didn't finish my, my sentences on it. I wanted to say that there's a measured move. Oh, I did. What I said was, if you're looking at the E-mini, which is trading at uh, 38, 16.75, at 10.03, I believe it was 10.01. 10.01, I, when I see this arch formation, oh, I should do this because uh, a lot of people, I'm sure, because I have had uh, comments from people that normally would be just be watching Larry, uh, saying, yeah, we, we, we like the fact that you pinpoint particular patterns that repeat over and over in the market. So I look at straight line up, straight line down, cup formation, Arch formation. I should articulate. It's going from one point down and then back again. It could be a V-shaped formation. It could sometimes even be a rectangle that turns into a bowl formation. We're going to be looking at that in a moment, like a rectangle. Um, and the other is where you come down, then you rally and you fail and you come back and retest that low. It could be an arch or a V inverted V. Well, look at this. There's a pattern I call the dreaded H. Plummets down rallies up and a peak A or a B, it's uh, the first or second um, uh, uh, inverted V-shaped pattern that makes a peak. At the second peak or first, it turns around and takes out the left side low. Well, what I said was, I look at this and we had that big spike and then I like to make measured moves, either measured move, left side, right side, price, time match. I was going to do this. I really didn't have time because I was about to come onto my show. Then I did come onto my show. Normally what I would do is I would draw in, and you've seen me do this over and over again. I My, my expression always is that in a, there we go, in a, in an arch formation, when we come down on that second part, because I love to look at the number of bars on the left match to the number of bars on the right, either in a cup or an arch, if you're able to identify the ictus, the very turning point of the top or the bottom, you get like a boat, you can get the bottom, the hull of the boat as it curves around, uh, and it's called the quarrow, 
that that quarter, the semicircle, the quarter of a semicircle, quarrel, uh, that's exactly what we were looking at here on the left side. And when it came down on the right, what I normally would have done, I actually do this, even though in a one minute chart it's crazy, but I would be, I'd be, I'm typing away as, as, I, as I'm trading because I have limited time sometimes to actually trade. And, um, and unlike Larry, where he has a pattern that says, I'm looking at something and through my measurements, either through the Fibonacci retracements to the, for the, or the expansion or the Gartley, um, I'm looking or uh, it could be greater than the Gartley. Um, it doesn't matter. Whatever I'm looking at, I have specifics that I'm looking at at price points and those price points is where I'm going to begin the trade. And he always says, put in your trade and then just don't look at the computer. My technique is completely different. You can do all your work while you're at the computer, but once you do it, your only obligation is to count on the upside, peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D. That's where you got to, the, the yellow light goes on. Um, and then on the way down, that's where you need to be looking at the technicals to see what happens, plus the patterns. And you can do the notation, but the notation on the way up is absolutely imperative. On the way down, it is optional. It gives me a whole bunch of other information, but I don't necessarily trade on the letters on the way down. Oh, I should have been doing this instead of talking to you. What I do is in the Chapman Wave, we're always looking for four higher peaks minimum. A buy signal can be uh, um, upgraded to a buy mode with the implication in the Chapman Wave that it should go to at least four higher peaks peak D. Other things can happen at D. Huh. I, I meant to do this in the very beginning. I did and said I was blabbing away. Now look what we've got. I drew this in, I drew the rectangle formation, I drew the bowl formation, in other words, a little bit deeper, uh, uh, elongated than a cup. And I, I put in A, I put in B, I didn't have time because I've been talking, I, I should have put in the C. What's my obligation in the buy mode in the Chapman wave is to get to at least a D. What did we just get to? A D. What did we do in the time frame that I, that I already notated? In the time frame I notated, you can barely see it there, but it's there. Um, let me just get rid of this rectangle formation because the rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience, but it can sometimes change into something else. And what I didn't I do that? Oh, I'll do it now. I'll do it live because this is what I would have done regardless. I go to the left side. In this case, I'm using the 200 period moving average. Tell me, just visually in this one minute chart, how important is this 200 period moving average? Look at that takeoff. Look at that breakdown where it became resistance. Look at this take off now attempt, but it hasn't been able to break above it, this orange line. It's sitting right on it. So now look at this. This is what I would normally do. You've seen this in every one of my charts. I go left side, right side. So what I do, I, you know, you can do this with straight lines. You don't have to have all this fancy stuff with, that trade station has with the rectangles and everything. Doesn't matter. Find your, find your, people do use all different methodologies. They don't have cup formation, so they do, do a V-shaped pattern, left side to the right side. Just invent something or just, you can print it out and do it on paper and pencil. Doesn't matter. I do it mostly visually. I do it like this so that I can demonstrate it to my subscribers to my opening call. Now look at this. I would have done this exactly right here. And it would have said to me on this one minute chart from this particular moment right here at uh, 10, 12 this morning a.m. Eastern Time at 3703.75. Of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. Dow's down uh, 18, SB's up two. And look at this left side, right side price time match. Oops, the right it says. Um, that said, that by uh, 1109, I'm going to go to our call in a moment, but by 1109, we'll be, be testing this candle of 1011. And to the minute, the exact minute, there it is. There's my plum. I love when you've got a plumb line that works exact. There it is. And now it says, uh, the the high bar of this particular candle, which is at um, 37.9375, has until I got extended one more bar. There it is. Has until 11.23 to 25 to try to get to that level, and we'll see what happens. Okay, we've got our first caller. We've got Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, how are you? Oh, I'm doing well, Basil. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Calling You'd back like about Clovis, we looked at this maybe, oh, I don't know, a week or so ago, and it, you know, it was actually making some big move when we were talking, and then it you know, had a little pullback, and now I think we might have started um, leg C today, but just wanted to have you take a look at it. So, Brent, do you remember, I remember this distinctly because it's part of the technique I had. Um, I said this is a green inverted Chapman Wave Roman candle right here. That was the candle of, um, I think you spoke to me in, in, intraday as it was doing its job. And I said, maybe take a little bit off because if it pulls back a little too far, then you, you the gains that you've got now might be uh, dis dissipating, but take a little bit off. But it looks to me that at any point in the next I would prefer to see it in the next three to, I think I said, four sessions. But at any point, if it starts to trade and hold in a shorter time frame than the daily chart, above the midpoint of this long-legged Chapman Wave Roman candle inverted wick, and it went above two, uh, two, oh, $2 dollars, I, I don't think I said 202, I think I said two dollars, there's a chance that that bar of very quickly, it'll try to get close to just under or right above the previous high, and that was the high of 240. So today, the low was 1.78, and lo and bold, you said you've done your homework, you love this as a stock that over the years you've been looking at, you've been in, you've been out, and you've built up a position. 
And I said to you, looking out, it seems to me, because it's, uh, what is it, biotech, right? Oncology, right, Bio, uh, Clovis Oncology, CLVS. Because it's in this area, if you look at the chart, you see that very often biotechs have this big spike and then nothing, and they go to lower lows. Then big spike, it's almost as if they're paying the, the people in options or something like that, and then the price goes down again. Um, but in this case, I said, it's only done that once, if this is a, a good candle, it needs to be sustaining any big move, um, and that'll change the character. I think, in a sense, you've, you've you're nailed it exactly. It's changed its character. There's something that's going on in the biotech area, and I was going to do that earlier in my show, the ti in my show, the Tiger Technicians Hour. Uh, uh, Piki had asked me about. Um, uh, it wasn't the, I went to the IBB, but it was, a, I, I think I, I went to the IBB, that's the NASDAQ biotech area, and I was about to go through a whole bunch of stocks. We have one for my subscribers that uh, we were going to put on, and I just decided I wouldn't do it today. But very low price in the under $10, like exactly like this, that are having fabulous moves. I don't know what's going on in the, in the little mini biotech uh, area. So this fits exactly, and what I said to you, I recall, is that I don't think it was a 242, it's a 243 right now, the 200 period exponential moving average was going to become very important if there's another attempt to get close to it, because the previous one went to a peak D and failed back on the 6th of, of April at, two, at 314, that was peak D, whoosh, we came down, and uh, left side, right side, price, time, match came down, in a longer time frame, but gap down. So now what I'm looking at is I'm now, and I drew the cup formation. We are now way above, at least even if I make it generous, we're way above the high that was, um, yeah, that was made at on the 25th of April at 2.48, that little pop to the upside for a peak A or B minus. Um, I like what it is, but now you've got another issue. The 200 period of 2.43, is going to become a barrier, a resistance level, a magnet, and you want it to reverse to become a propellant. So with that said, let me ask you, what are you doing? Oh, I just, again, I, I told you, I've got some options that are out quite a ways in that right. 2024, actually. So I have time on those and then the shares that I bought were down low enough under a dollar that I'm just trying to just let this play out, basically. So I, I love that idea because you, you're you going to sleep at night. You don't have to care about what happens because you have a position that's based on other factors. With a long-term position, probably you don't even have a number, but you know that your longer-term position in your mind, you're thinking probably somewhere in the sixes at some point at least. If that's the case, I don't want to do anything. I just want to say to you, just for the moment, see how the 240s, it's at 234 right now, it had a high today of 250. See how that holds. And at any point, if two out of three sessions, the next level that it needs to try to accomplish is the highs of the 7th, the 7th and 8th of April in the two, 279 area. And it's a 243. If it can close at two, 282 at any stage, not only that is it 40 cents above the 200 period moving average, but that previous high that was 314 becomes the target. I would do that. The only thing I'm going to say to you is it's a Friday. So the weekly chart, if it holds, even if it pulls back a tad, but the, so far, this is, um, I don't know if this was a Friday on, uh, let me just check, on the first, the week of the 1st of April. Wow. The 1st of April was exactly like the 1st of July. It was a Friday. And look at that candle. That was, a, that was one of the times that it closed on a Friday, really strong, one of the only times. So it looks like today is going to be the second time. So it's trying to, you can see that on a purely technical basis, the veracity of each move is starting to find um, a, a better foundation in the very short term. You want that now to uh, be in the weekly chart, and that says you want to now make a base between 150 and 120 
over the next two weeks on any big pullback. You don't really want to see that. I'm just saying looking out because I'm looking at a weekly chart and looking at a monthly chart, which I don't have to tell you still looks just awful and I'm being polite. So uh, they're doing something right. The market's recognizing it. The, the, in, the, the insiders must be recognizing it. You've probably checked about the insider buying or not. My suspicion is if you go to insider buy on Clovis uh, Oncology, maybe you'll find one or two uh, of the, uh, the, uh, the uh, directors have actually put in some positions here. So I love what you're doing. It's a fabulous session today on a Friday, like it was on that one Friday we put about back in April. So congratulations. Hope that Thank helps. you, Basil. Have a great weekend. You too. Thank you very much for calling. Have a wonderful weekend. I'll be back, folks. Dow's down 100. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Back. Bowser Trapp. I usually do the Tiger Technicians Hour, 10 to 11. A bunch of questions that were in that hour I have left over for, for now. I'm going to get to them. Look how important the 200-period moving average is. Remember, looking at the one-minute chart in the ESU 22, this is the September E-mini, uh, it went to that peak E. It failed to break just a slightly higher to get to the high of the... Oh, wait a minute. It almost went to the high of the candle. There it is. The high was... Uh, what did I say? 93.75, and this high right here was 91. Oh, I just missed it. And now it's pulling back, and it's treating the 200-period moving average as some kind of support. Enough of that. There's a whole bunch of questions I, I'm going to get to right now. So thank you, uh, Brent, for that call on uh, Clovis uh, Technology uh, Oncology. Uh, now, let me just, uh, Devin was a question. Let me go to Devin. I'm going backwards here, so maybe I'm missing some of earlier on. Yeah, so Devin screamed. So the question was, Devin, uh, 
closing. Basil, Devon, uh, uh, please, it rocketed to 79 and now 54, should I add? So this is exactly the area where you want to make some kind of decision about the energy sector, the stocks, the, all, all those different oil sector stocks, etc. My suspicion is the market at some point is going to recognize that many of those inflationary aspects are, have, have, when you think that you've gone from uh, the 79 level with a doji candle high in Devon Energy DVN's symbol, 7940 was the high on the 9th. And here it is trading right on the 200 period moving average at 53.84. I hear these are not minor uh, uh, pullbacks. Look at the way it, it's rallied. It, even the big spike the up was one, two, three, four, five, six weeks. And in three weeks, it's come down to that same level, the Eiffel Tower, straight up, straight down. So this is what I'm going to suggest. And normally in a situation like this, I say if you're looking longer term and you're still bullish, then maybe this is, I mean, you, you're getting it, what, 40% less than it was, 30-something uh, percent. Yes, you could start a position. I'm going to do something very different here. I'm going to suggest rather wait for a little bit of strength to see how it holds this 200 period moving average. You won't miss much because if it does make a U-turn and go from the H pattern into a successful dreaded H and become a cup formation, it should go to at least 65. So with that in mind, I'm just going to say, if you can think in options, I'd go all the way out to not July, I'd go to August and I'd get, um, in that case, I usually I say in the money. In this case, I'll say out the money. Get a 62.50 August call and just forget about everything. And just one day you'll wake up and say, whoa, it's gone from 75 cents to $1.50. But that's the only way right now. Let me do some work over the weekend. Um, very busy weekend. I won't be around very much, but um, I, I will be doing for my subscribers to my opening call on uh, either tonight or early tomorrow morning, I'll send out my market overview for next week. But I do believe that the pullback that we've seen, I'm not, I'm treating this a little differently to crude oil, but crude oil is still stuck in a high range. It's, it's not breaking down. It's not breaking up either. So I'm just going to suggest for the moment you can do, you know, you've got Devon Energy. Let's just jump to a multinational CVX. Exactly the same pattern. 182 to 144 right now sitting right this could be a wonderful buy uh, uh, situation i just want to give it another day i don't think you, let's say all of a sudden sunday night and then monday because of international activity the market is up huge like it was on the holiday before uh, that we had was it juneteenth yeah juneteenth um and then tuesday opens uh, up sharply uh, and then maybe it pulls back but we don't know so let's just see that I'm just going to recommend in the whole area of energy, I, I don't think it's gone. I think it's going to be coming back. Look at this XLE. They all have the same pattern. XLE is a much better weekly chart pattern at this particular point um, in terms of making higher highs and higher lows. But it took out the left side low that was the big move uh, to the upside. So I'm saying hold off. So then let me just check now. Uh, but hold off, but I'm going to put for Tuesday of next week, I'm going to go back to Devon, and I probably will in any case. Let's just look at um, Slumberger, SLB, Slob, SLB. Uh, oh, it took out its left side low. Mm -hmm -hmm. You see, that's why I'm a little careful, and it's under the 200 period moving average, not looking good at all. Okay, uh, so it's uh, a so question there, question there. I uh, want you to, good, 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 good. Just checking to see things that I might have missed. Yeah, so the question about the comp index, look, the QQQ, about the Qs, that is the NDX 100 Invesco QQQ Trust Series, the candle that we saw, oh, I, I discussed this, didn't I? I said it closed, uh, it, it went in June, it went under and closed underneath the left side uh, um, long-legged doji type candle of May. Uh, I, I think I did that. I, wasn't it this one? Yeah, I think I did that. But the, make it simple. I think that if the queues, oh, I did. So if the queues, the queues, and, and sometime in July, need a weekly close above 297 to say, phew, we're trying to form some kind of a base. We're not just breaking down every single month. We finally made a trough. I don't want to see the trough of 269.28 taken out, but it's so close. I think it probably will be taken out. So I, I don't want to make this, I don't want to be Pollyannish. I don't want to say, woohoo. 
uh, everything's going up. No, I think it's very selective. And even within the queues, there are some stocks that are still now uh, flailing. They're just terrible. I wonder what Shopify is doing. Let me just have a look at Shop. Ugh. Stuck in a rectangle formation. Trinidad H becomes a lowercase m, and then it breaks to the lower low, and then an inverted V. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is a star. This is just not good at all. So, yeah, it's very selective. Uh, another question came in. So, uh, okay. So, what I said was in this hour, let me just go through these things because uh, it's important. Oh, v VLO, you want to look at it? VLO? Yep, Duffy, here we go. VLO, same pattern, except it has held. Oh, I didn't put the down arrow. A little do two doji candles at the very top at about 140. I'll tell you right now. 140 something, 146.81 on the 8th, and here we are at 106. Eee, that's not good. So let me see if I can use this quieter mouse. It's irritating me. Yeah, okay. So trough A, trough B, trough C. I don't know. It looks to me. I can just tell you this. If Valero any day closes under 101, the 97.44200 period moving average will become a magnet. All right, so we've done that. All right, here we go. Let's go quickly through these different things before I run out of time. The Dow Industrials. See this doji candle from yesterday? All right here. Um, long legged doji, a small uh, doji, but long legs. Should look like a plus sign, looks like a better plus sign today. If there's a close below this candle right here of the 23rd of June of 30,293. This that would be terrible action and suggest that the 29. Oh, wait a minute. 20. What did I say it was? 29. Oh, 30,293. Yes, 30,293. It makes that 29,653 low of the 17th a target in the dreaded H pattern. So far, it's holding pretty well. I should say under the circumstances. I don't know what circumstances they are today, but it's holding okay. If at any point next week, there's a rally in the Dow above this little doji candle below the high of the 29th, this is a real tiny doji, like a plus sign. 31,152. Oh, that sounds like a dream. But if there is a close above that any time next week, I believe July is going to see a range, but then I can discuss it Tuesday as a range that we look at. But it hasn't done that. Oh, at least I can discuss it next week as a range. Then there could Are be you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. Yes, it's Mozart's music, and yes, it should be Larry Pistafento. I'm hoping Larry will be back next week and that his voice is much improved. We're looking at um, uh, the, a narrow trading range in this one-minute chart. And you remember, what did I say about the 200-period uh, the moving average? It's like a magnet. As it gets there, look at this. The, it, it's struggling to break away to the upside. It's in a rectangle formation. Since we've been talking about this, since about before 11 when my show was finishing and we looked at that peak E, that left side, right side price time match, and here it is struggling, and you keep thinking it's going to break out. And what does a narrow rectangle do? It says when you get to the top, a majority of the time, you should be shorting, although you think it's going to go break out. If, if you short and then it comes to the bottom, you think it's going to break down? Nope. It's going to turn around and go back up. So we're stuck in this rectangle formation. I wanted to show that, and there's a ton that I want to do. So here we go. Um, within the context of all the things we're looking at, uh, let me go. Uh, let me do this before I forget. W, wheat. I've discussed this before. There's the dreaded H pattern. Peak D. How many peak Ds have you seen that have been major turnarounds? There's your arch formation, the dreaded H. It took out the left side low within two bars, maybe three. You want to see a close above that left side low to give you some sense of support as a base. Oops. It did the one to one breakout to the downside. Wheat. Uh, now under the daily 200, this is the weekly chart I'm looking at. The daily uh, went to a peak C minus. But it was way under the previous high. Uh, this is the that we did this live. The Chapman Wave Roman candle at a high at 1363 and a half, whatever the high was, because this is a continuous contract. That price changes, but the pattern doesn't. Nothing changes other than the price. On the 8th of March, I said the same as I was talking to Brent Brent a little bit earlier about his Clovis. It was an inverted Chapman Wave Roman candle. And it went above the halfway marker and it went back to the tip of the wick, which was upside down. In this case, it took out the lower one and it, that was it. It's never seen it again. Dreaded H goes through an, an M pattern, then there's another one, then it goes all the way up to uh, a peak C minus because it fails and it plunges. And there's the Chapman wave. I don't want to do this now. I did this yesterday um, during both my show and Larry's, I believe. Chapman wave falling axe formation, inverted falling axe formation right here. Uh, and it says, just be careful because this pattern has the habit of making the previous support very strong resistance. I'll show you this in the GDX in a moment. So here we are. Oh, why? Uh, let me go back to my other mouse, the noisy mouse. There it is. Click, click, click. There it is. There we go. So we're looking at wheat, dust wheat, trading at uh, 848, down 36. Ooh, that was tough. Okay. So what we're looking at in this big archish formation, look at that, plunges below, right there. Below the 200 period moving average, look at the left side, right side price time match. And it's only right at the end of the right side where um, it usually has a big candle going to test that left side low. It's I call that the crash candle. You're talking about a one minute chart, I mean, a daily chart. So uh, 1088 down to 10, uh, down to 1000 in one bar. I mean, that's that it's like a crash, but I'm just talking about the power, the momentum. 
and it took it out, and now you're down here. And that says the whole area of 832 is going to be very important. What about soybean continuous contract? Oh, Oh, this is what happens once in a while. It all gets smoothed out, and then I have to do all my notation again because this is, I do it by hand. It's not automated. So look at this. You made a peak. I believe that was peak A, B, C, D. And you made your top right there on the daily chart in soybeans. It's trading now down 60 at 1397. This is the reason why I think the market is going to wake up at some point, maybe next week, and say, you know what? The Fed keeps talking about deflation, etc., but we're actually uh, inflation. We're actually just momentarily we're having some kind of deflation. Some price points have come back all the way to pre-COVID. Um, what the heck's going on? Well, you can see that in the uh, soybean, if it closes at 13.97 right now, if it closes under 13.70, 13.72 is a warning. But if it closes under 13.70 and then actually starts to trade for two days or so at about 13.48 or 44, boom, 13.20 is the 200 period moving average. It hasn't been there since it broke out on the upside. It, it, it hugged it because of the magnet of the 200 period moving average all the way through uh, November, December, uh, November 2021, and then January of 2020. Oh, no. Yes, 2021. Is that correct? I don't know. I always dates. Uh, December 21 into January, yes. And then it broke out. Never looked back. Didn't even need it. Now you need it. All right. What about uh, corn? Corn, as we say here. Look at that. Breakdown. Oh, I had this. So what a beautiful chart this was. I did the left side, right side price time match like the dreaded H, but this in case is the uh, inverted Y pattern at the highs. And I said, be careful. And look at this. And we do have the DBA agricultural fund. We, we've got it in the 13s. It hit 23. And now it's trading at the DBA is trading at 20.08. I, I might just say, you know, I'm done with this. I don't want to say I'm done with it. I think that the grains will have their moment in the sun. Yeah. Oh, good one. Uh, sometime. But at 624, if it starts to trade for two days below 611, Boom, 594 becomes a 200 period exponential moving average. Some of these might hold just above and then have a move. So I want you to show that, that and U.S. bonds. So this is the bond. Look at that big spike today. Leg C to the upside went right to the peak C1, C2 double top in the bonds on the 25th at uh, 140 and 60. Uh, no, 141 and 23, 30 seconds. So we've made a leg C. This, on the weekly basis, if there is a close in the bonds, continuous contract, above 142, let's make it 143, a little bit weird, 40, another four points, that's a big deal. If there is a close on a weekly basis, it says that a lot of the Fed's work has been done. Will they mess it up by changing their, they should stick to their formula right now. Let me show you something. This is with a black background chart. 30-year TYX white. 10-year Tino, T and X brown. CYN, the five years FVX cyan. We hit, I don't know if it's been smoothed out. Uh, oh, the, the reason why corn had all those letters up there, I do it by hand, so it doesn't want to magically position it just above the bar. I'll have to go in sometime and either drag them down. What I usually do is just get rid of them and I, I type in because it takes much less time. So look at this, I'm showing you. There's the brown, there's the, the, the um, cyan, here's the white. And the cyan went above three weeks ago. Uh, the the five-year went above the 10. And the five-year was way above the 30-year. Why would people even bother with the 30-year when you got the cyan playing that? Anyway, what we're looking at is there's been a big pullback over the last two weeks. It's helped a little bit. Here's the Philadelphia Housing Index. So the Housing Index green inside bar last week and a little bit higher this week. So it says to me, I know the Dow's struggling. I know the general markets are struggling. But what it's saying is there are enough conditions right now to at least allow for a breather in the market before reassessing. And that could be and I, people have said when we made the lows recently, they would last. Something. 
Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. TFNN has just launched their July 4th Tiger Dollar Sale. For one week only, we've doubled all the bonuses, where you can now get up to 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase. Tiger Dollars are good on all TFNN newsletters, webinars, and trading services, and they never expire. For all the details and to get your Tiger Dollars before the sale ends Tuesday, July 5th, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. So we've got that one minute chart that went to uh, 30, uh, what was it, 37.91, round number high, at 11.19, came back, tested the 200 period moving average, tried to rally, couldn't get to the, the, the upper level of the rectangle, now is taken out the 200, that's how important it is, look, the 200 period moving average, gone, it was support, support, and look at the price movement, look at this from the match, from this side, right here, to this side. I mean, I love this. This such simple techniques, and once you get into the rhythm of them, it just says to you, okay, I, I know that I know how to handle all these things. Look, left side, right side, price, time match, took out that midpoint, broke down, and now it's under it. That makes the 3778 area really strong resistance, and here we are at 3768. So let me do this quickly because it's, it, it is important to my work. Just wanted to show you that the uh, Philadelphia Housing Index has helped with the has been helped by the um, rates at least ameliorating coming down a little bit right here. So there's the stalling pattern. Look at the wood, the iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF still very weak, sitting right for the second week now, sitting just above the 200 period moving average. And look at that beautiful propeller shaft midpoint, uh, 98, 98. And I drew this in. You remember, I'm not going to do it now. The one, the one to one expansion, the Chapman wave in the parallel time frame and and degree, we're right there. So we're going to be watching this and high grade copper. So as we're about to wrap up, let me re re reiterate again. Number one, 
Tiger dollar sale going on right now. For all of those people out there, you have your, uh, yeah, your fa- you, you've got hosts that you really respect. You want to know more about the work, or you already get the newsletter. What a good time to get the, the that you know, get the Tiger dollars. That's number one. Number two is I, I'm hoping Larry will be back. All of us are. I believe he's getting a lot better. Let's see if he's good for next week. We miss him. Number three is I wish all of you a really a wonderful long weekend. We'll see you next weekend. Check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. And I hope to see you again next week. My show, 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock, the usual time. Thoughts on Veil vale as we go out to the break. Veil, vale, Valet is uh, right here. Valet is trading at, yep, there is the same thing. Be careful at 13.96. It must hold the 12s. 